Welcome, my beautiful souls. Um, this is Sagittarius's November 2024 reading. Some of you may say, wait a minute, Sandy, it's a little early. Um, that's because I am taking a break, uh, probably for about two weeks. And um, I just wanted to get, you know, I didn't want you to miss your reading. So that's why you may seem just a little early, but you know what? doesn't matter. It's all in divine timing. Um, you know, that's where I put my trust. A reading will come across you or you across it in the perfect time. Um, I trust in my guides. I trust in my guides to reach your guides. So Sagittarius, uh, my fiery, beautiful Sagittarius. Is, this is um, going to be for Sagittarius sun, moon, rising. Um, some you could certainly have planets in the sign of Sagittarius. Uh, there's a lot going on around that time period, I know, planetary wise. Um, so, you know, I wish I could give you, like, put a name to all of it, but, um, I may do a video on that. But anyway, so you may also be in love with the Sagittarius. Um, just know, again, because I do read through my spirit guides that, they know that you're here, so they'll send you messages. Uh, that's why I truly believe in divine timing. You know, like sometimes you'll run across a video that may be a year old, and maybe you don't know that going in, and you watch the video, and it's exactly what you needed to hear at that time. Well, that's divine timing. So, though I have to put a date, I mean, I guess I don't have to, um, but just to keep them in a playlist fashion, I do have to put a date. So, November. Um, and I, again, for this month, I am doing opposite signs. So, um, Gemini is your opposite. So, I will do Gemini after you. I haven't done it yet. Um, and the reason why I'm doing opposite is because I feel like there's so much we can learn. You know, I felt intuitively guided to do it that way back in September. And I just love, like, I can see the synchronicities. I know not everybody can, um, but I can. So I see why I was guided to do it that way. Um, you know, in your opposite sign, there's a lot you can learn um, and a lot they can learn from you. It's just sometimes what we're lacking they have and what they're lacking you have so that's why i'm doing it i am also bringing back the major arcanas for november um and these are really to give us like a bullet point on the reading they're all major arcanas i think i broke the deck up um but it was so long ago that i really can't remember uh, but again, I'm reading them as like bullet points. I'm not really looking at them like people, though I will give you the sign just for those who really want it. <laughs> um, and we'll probably start with these. We, of course, are going to get Mother Mary's words of wisdom. But I'm going to do this at the end of the reading for this month. Um, I brought out the romance angels just in case. We'll see how the reading goes, but if it turns towards love in any part of it, then I also am going to bring in the romance angels. Usually there is some love. You know, this is life is really what I'm reading. I'm reading life and that does consist of, you know, love or potential of love, your money, um, your family, just what's going on around you at the time. So we'll use them if need be and for our clarifiers or to go deeper we're going to use the gilded tarot i just love this deck to clarify i love the deck on its own but it's just found a place here as our clarifying deck um so this is to go deeper and this is why the readings are long because i want to give you answers i want to give you like you know what i feel like the readings are they're like a road map. They're the potential of how I can live my best life. I'm not giving you predictions. I'm giving you really the potential. And that's why you don't want to skip over like some of the lessons. Because sometimes we get stuck within a lesson and nothing seems to move. 
And this is why I do this. So you don't get stuck. So you can keep moving forward. All right. So, and for your main spread, we are going to use the Tarot of Dreams. It's interest, interesting because it's not a normal deck that I use for you. But it was calling to me today. So I am I, I never ignore my intuition. Um, let's go ahead and open the reading and let's start with our major arcanas. I'm going to go ahead and bring the lid down a little bit. A little bit more, not too far. All right. We'll give them a little shuffle. Not a lot of them said so they're not the easiest thing to shuffle. By the way, everything is always pre-shuffled before you come. Um, that's really where I'm just meditating on your sign, opening myself up to our guides, clearing my own energy. Okay. Sagittarius. All right, we have the hangman. So, you know, the hangman can be pause, a pause in action. The hangman's seeking wisdom. Um, I feel like the hangman's seeking spiritual wisdom, but to use on this earthly plane. You know, I always notice with this hangman how he's like swaying. Um, and he's swaying like towards the next card. So let's see what the next card is. You know, what's the period of time for the hangman? It really depends. Um, because again, this is about someone who is really seeking wisdom. Like, help me, guide me. You know, um, chances are there's something new. And I have to say that because next we have the world, which is the next chapter. Um, also, a very spiritual time, I feel, in one's life. Um, you know, the world card is the last card in the tarot. And for some reason, I pick that up as like the closest energy to God. Um, so there must be spirituality within that. And I feel like whatever happens, you know, what's ever opening up in this next chapter, to me, often it does, you know, I feel like it's for the rest of one's life. But again, your spirituality is, listen, some of you, that's what you're seeking. You're seeking divine guidance. And maybe by receiving the divine guidance, it allows you to trust more and more within your spiritual team who's always trying to guide you. You know, they can't interrupt in your free will, but they will definitely send you signs numbers, songs. Some of you, this is your sign. This is your sign. All right. We have, well, the hermit. Uh, first of all, it's Carter uh, Virgo. Uh, you know what I feel like this person is? It's interesting because the hermit is, you know, you'll either see the hermit like going into a cave or emerging from a cave, so to speak. And if I'm going into the cave, then I'm probably going through some type of a dark night of the soul, something difficult. I am seeking wisdom as the hermit. Um, but you know what I love about the hermit is, first of all, I feel like the hermit becomes a master teacher. And it may just, you know, be within an energy. Um, but I feel like while the hermit is seeking the wisdom, what the hermit really realizes is, you know, I'm seeking light, right? But what I figure out is I am the light. I am my own savior. I don't really need anybody else to come in and save me. Though this is you receiving the wisdom also from your guides. And this hermit is emerging from the cave and is beacon of, beacon of light. He almost feels like he's shaking it. I don't know why it reminds me of like the Salvation Army. How they ring that bell. Mm. Some of you, um, you know what I was going to tell you before I even started the reading? Like, feel free 
in any of my readings or really anybody's readings to ask your guides to give you signs of confirmation. That can be where, just like how he said Salvation Army, I felt like someone was thinking about that. Or maybe you work for them or there's something that I feel that connection. Um, so feel feel very comfortable asking your guides for signs and clarity. But anyways, um, what I love about the hermit is I do feel like the hermit becomes like the master teacher. And maybe it's just in life itself. But the hermit also wants to share the, his beacon, her beacon of light. Like, you know, I naturally want to help others. It's also a nine. And to me, nines are about reflection. And that's exactly what the hermit's doing, right? Reflecting upon one's life or even maybe just a chapter. Um, again, the hangman. It's almost like this is me as a human in the hangman's energy. Um, uncertain of my spirituality. But as I seek this wisdom, I definitely feel like not only do you find it, but then... It's you taking that energy and then helping others, um, maybe who are going through the same thing you're going through or something that you have been through. And then the beautiful Empress. Wow. My creative, loving, nurturing, strong, wise, abundant. Look at her bounty. She's very abundant. Why? Because she's someone who, I mean, we all receive signs, we all receive epiphanies, but this is someone who has learned to live in the present moment. And, and one of the reasons why is because she knows that our spiritual team sends our, our signs in the present moment, not in the past, not in the future. So the hangman swaying towards the world it's almost like i want this change i want to learn what i can learn and then i want to use that wisdom you know to help others whether i'm doing that professionally or i'm just doing it you know for the people in my life you know and i also feel the hermit is like an old soul so the hermit would definitely pay attention to like the signs well, the hermit just received some important signs. Um, also, the mother figure. I don't know why I said it like that. The mother figure. Hermit's looking right at her. It's almost like as I was going through this dark night of the soul, I started having these epiphanies. I started having these ideas of different things I can do and bring to the world. Um, again, I feel the hermit as the master teacher, uh, an old soul. That means that means wisdom uh, many lifetimes, you know, and spiritual wisdom. All right. Let's go ahead and um, bring in the tread drainage. Oh. Queen of Wands didn't want to come up with the rest. Probably you. Maybe you're trying to separate yourself from the pack in some way. You know what I mean? Like, like I want to do something on my own. Let's do one more shuffle. All right, let's give him a cut. So, I don't know why I'm having a hard time picking them up. All right, and let's begin. Something new is opening up. Something that um, is probably going to last for the rest of your life. 
Um, I feel for many of you, like, again, maybe during a dark period in your life, you were, you did receive some epiphanies, some ideas. Like, it's almost like showing you the way out. Beautiful. The Knight of Pentacles. So, those who have been with me know that I call this my guardian angel. Not mine. Our guardian angel. Your guardian angel. Um, and the Knight of Pentacles has a few different messages. The first message is patience. Well, with the hangman right above it, patience, I feel like you've had. Um, the Knight of Pentacles is bringing a pentacle. And, you know, I say a pentacle, but sometimes it can be more than one pentacle. It's bringing a pentacle in to help you um, enhance your life in some way. And again, some of you may have been receiving some epiphanies, and this may give you the way. The Knight of Pentacles, the patience, is when you're ready. You know what I mean? Like, like I feel like the Knight of Pentacles says, there's no sense in me bringing this pentacle in until you're ready, until you're going to use this pentacle and really expand your life, enhance it in some way, maybe live a dream. Whatever it may be, again, guardian angel energy, I feel like, you know, this is like your top guide. So we know that something's coming in. We know that there's been a pause in the action. But the hang, or, I'm sorry, the Knight of Pentacles says I come at the right time, not before, not after. Another reason to live in the present moment so that you can really catch this sign the first time i'm saying a sign but i feel like the knight of pentacles is bringing something into your world that is tangible you know physical it's not like an emotion this is something that i can touch so let's see let's keep going You know, some of you could have been through a difficult um, period. Yet, I feel that you come out of that period stronger than you've ever been. All right, we have the death card. Part of Scorpio, your neighbor. Uh, but this is about closing of doors. You know, the death card is about transformation. And it's something, you know, it, it's not something that needs to be feared. This is about closing a door. But I promise you, when that door closes, another door opens. That's why it's really considered a rebirth. You know, anytime you see the death card, first of all, I feel like you got to look at it twofold means something's got to end. Probably not serving me anymore anyway. And by allowing it to end, it's like I'm signaling to the universe, I'm ready for this new door to open. And it will. And I love that it's next to the Knight of Pentacles. It's almost like the Knight of Pentacles is saying, like, I can't come in until a certain door is closed. Again, why? Because I want you to be able to take this pentacle. Let's call it a blessing. And I want you to be able to, to like, I, you know, it, it's like your guardian angel already knows your soul. And knows some of the things that your soul really wanted to accomplish in this lifetime. So they're helping you. But we do have to learn that there are doors, you know, it's like there's chapters to our life. And we have to learn when to close the chapter. The Hermit, number nine, final reflection. Okay. Two swords. Interesting. But then look at this. The Four of Wands. This is the marriage card. This is a commitment. Um, I feel the energy and this is true love. I love that 
we're opening this up with the Knight of Pentacles because I feel like this is like potentially saying um, there is a commitment on the horizon. Now, first and foremost, I feel like I have to commit to myself. I have to commit to my own goals, you know, the things that I would like to do in the world. And I feel like as I'm thinking about those things or even moving into that type of energy, then I don't feel like I have to worry about, you know, who's in the four of wands. Though we do have a worry card right beside it, the two of swords. Two of swords is the energy of wearing a blindfold because there just may be something I don't want to face. And, you know, it feels like there's little resistance to closing a door or ending a chapter. But yet, this blindfold, you know, it's like a facade. It doesn't, it doesn't really serve you to wear it. Like, you're better off just facing whatever it is you need to face. And by the way, I have to feel like when we do that, we take the blindfold off, like what I expected to happen doesn't. You know, it do, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be type of energy. Maybe it's better than I thought it could be. So, you know. Um, let's do five across. We have the three of pentacles. Love it. I'll tell you why I love seeing the three of pentacles here for a couple different reasons. First of all, the empress is right there. Three and three. Some of you, it's like, you know, you, some of you may have a master um, number 33 for your life path. But it could also refer to, like, what am I here to master? The Three of Pentacles is about your individuality and what it is you do in the world. Some of you, you're beginning something new, but you're ready. You know, it is celebrating your individuality. And listen, it's... Thousand other people could be doing the same thing that you're going to be doing or that you're already doing, but nobody does it quite like you. And I love that the Knight of Pentacles is like helping to support that. What else I love, the Three of Pentacles sitting next to the Four of Wands. If the Four of Wands is talking about potential love, let's say in the future, then this would talk about someone who would appreciate you for exactly who you are, your individuality, and you them, by the way. You know, I often feel in the Three of Pentacles, I'm just putting my head down. I'm doing my thing. You know, just like when I do Tarot, it's like I get lost in it. Um, and there could be all kinds of things going on in the world, but I'm not, I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. That's kind of what I feel here, because I feel like there, again, could be this potential love. But maybe I don't even know about it yet. Yet again, go on, let's go back to the Knight of Pentacles. It's like I don't have to worry. Because when the timing is right, the timing is right. Two of Swords sitting right in the middle right now. That's the only energy that has a little resistance to it. All right, well, let's keep going and figure that out. You know, but the Hermit's right above it. And, you know, some of you could have been, again, through some difficult situations. And you don't want to repeat them. I get it. But the two swords, can it block an opportunity? It can. Um, it can even stop you from seeing a sign. You know, guidance from your spiritual team. But listen, they'll get that sign to you. Even with that blindfold on, like eventually, eventually you're going to take that blindfold off. And I just feel like, you know, that, that monster that I feared, it's not there. You know, again, it's like a facade. It's just something I believed um, 
I feel again, it's about believing within yourself. Again, closing of a door. I'm not 100% sure yet. You know, that's, and I'm saying that as you, like, I'm not 100% sure about closing that door. But your guardian angel is like, whoa, trust me. Trust me, my dear. Well, hello, star. Um, this is about your hopes, your dreams, and your wishes. This is about working hand in hand with divine to bring them about. I love that it's coming under the Knight of Pentacles. Because again, not to keep repeating myself, but the Knight of Pentacles is bringing something into your physical world. It's tangible. And it can be more than one thing. I don't feel like the Knight of Pentacles is a one-time action. I feel like as I move into, let's just say, the energy of the world, you know, I allow this next chapter to open up. However, I do feel like some of these things, you know, let's say you're starting a new career and it feels very creative, but also a lot of it coming from your wisdom and some of it from your, you know, like, you know, like how could, hmm, how do I say this? Like, Without my experiences, my past experiences, if I'm someone who wants to then help others, then it's important that I look at those experiences as in, what have I learned about myself? What has it taught me? What can I now do because of it? So, hopes, your dreams, your wishes, and manifesting them. Also card of Aquarius. And then, well, hello, Chariot. You know, I feel like whatever you may fear, you know, like if there's a fear about closing a door, or it, let's put it a different way, there's a fear of what's next. Can I handle it? Will, it be, will I be successful in it? Whether that be love, money, or all the above. The chariot really speaks about a few different things. But the first thing it speaks about is your unlimited potential. Like, there is no limit. It's our mind who puts a limit upon it. The chariot is, I feel like the chariot comes in when there's balance, when you found balance within yourself. Doesn't mean everything is perfect around you. But, you yourself feel balanced. Um, and I also want you to remember that the chariot is really driven by your intentions. Like you tell the chariot where to go through your intentions. That's why it's really unlimited energy or unlimited potential. Um, also card of Cancer. So we have Aquarius, Cancer, Scorpio. All kind of connected here. Virgo. So at the same time, I don't want you to really worry about the signs. And I say that because we're all a little bit of everything. All right, let's keep going. Whoa. Maybe try to fly away. Look at this, the full. Am I going to allow myself to have a new beginning? Am I going to allow myself to take a leap of faith? Because it feels like it is something that you are going to have to take a leap of faith in. Right under that two swords. So, will I or won't I? I hope you do. You know, the full signifies putting the past in the past. Just extracting, again, the wisdom of your lessons, of the things that you've learned within your life. But it's also spiritual wisdom. So I really am trusting when I take this leap of faith, trusting that the signs that I'm receiving are true. And they are. Because, again, we have the world, which does signify the next chapter. 
and the star opening up this line, you know, uh, some type of dream, a wish that maybe you've always wanted to bring to the world, but maybe the time just never felt right. Maybe part of it is the wisdom that you really needed to gain so that you can be that master teacher. The full, taking that leap of faith. Remember, the full lives in the present moment also. The full knows it's being guided. And that's why it's able. That's why a lot of times, not here, but you'll see the full like standing on a cliff. And I, I don't know, like, I don't know, you probably don't all know this, but I am making my own cards. And my foal has like angels right below the cliff saying, I'll catch you if you fall. I'll catch you if you fall. Take a chance on me. Take a chance on you. Interesting how your cards come out almost one by one. Hello, magician. So, this is the fool's first mentor along this journey. Interesting how we have the last card of the tarot, the world. And then we have the first and second card of the tarot. The fool and the magician. So, the magician's job is to teach the fool that... No need for fear, right? You already possess everything you need. It's within you to truly be successful. Know your power, you know? And when I say know your power, it's through your intentions. You're like, you know, your intentions are like nine-tenths of the law. If you had the intention of bringing, let's say, you know, whatever it is that you want to do here, I feel like here's the ability. The manifester. Following the foal. Under. The marriage card. It's pretty powerful. I mean, the second line is very powerful energy. Again, opening with the star, your hopes, your dreams, your wishes... And then the magician, the one who manifests them, which is you. But taking on the fool's energy, right? Taking that leap of faith on yourself and maybe on another because it is coming also under the marriage card. But we'll, we'll come back and look at that. One by one by one, we have the emperor. Now, I have to tell you, I love where the emperor is following. Because it's coming under that three of pentacles next to the magician. Card of Aries. And by the way, we have the emperor and the empress in the same reading. And when I see that, and who, I think Taurus. I think Taurus just had that also. Um, Different decks. Different decks. By the way, when I do your opposite sign, I will be using the exact same decks. But I change decks after I'm done with the opposites. Um, I go to different decks. So, again, though Taurus had this in the reading, it was in, it was from different decks. Um, one of the reasons why I love seeing the Emperor and the Empress, especially if it relates to love in any way, I feel like they are my power couple. They're two people that have been through, you know, some, probably some difficult experiences but they've come out the other side. They're both empathetic, compassionate. They both care about their fellow man and they both want to help in some way. Like I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine the Empress or the Emperor not helping in some way. It's just natural. Now, the Emperor coming under the Three of Pentacles, I feel like this is another omen for like, if there's something you want to create in this world, trust yourself. Like, really trust yourself. Because the emperor can certainly be like a business owner, um, a manager. This is someone um, where other people look up to the emperor. Like, I look to you just like I do for the empress. 
you know, the emperor and the empress's difference is in their energy because they are kind of opposite, but yet at the same time, they complete each other. The empress is, you know, the creative one, um, loving and nurturing. The emperor is more methodical, puts plans in place, but to, but both of them to get to the same place, to get the same results, they just go about it differently. I also love them as collaborating together. You know, we have the mother and the father figure here. Some of you might be meeting someone new, especially with the full right here. Someone new through your creative outlets. And the emperor is mirroring the star. And let's not forget how this whole thing opened up with the Knight of Pentacles, your guardian angel, asking you to consider closing the door. And I feel like that's what the hangman is asking. Should I close this door? Will it serve me to close this door? And the knight is like, yes, it will serve you. Now, when I say close the door, sometimes it's just like my thoughts, you know, where maybe I didn't believe in myself. I was uncertain if I brought something to the world, would anybody even pay attention to it? Well, the answer is yes, all day long. Especially with the three pentacles here, because it is about other people um, really admiring you, you know, for what, what it is that you do, but also who you are. It feels like your creative house is going to be on fire, which tells me your money is also going to be on fire. But we also have love on the table. So let's look at the bottom of the deck. Look at this. Another hermit. Double hermit. Interesting because here he is in the cave, right? He is seeking that wisdom. He hasn't emerged from the cave yet. And this hermit has emerged. This could be the two sides of yourself, right? Seeking those deep spiritual answers and then receiving them. The Knight of Pentacles is going to make sure, right? Because again, I come at the right time. And when I do come in, I come in to help you really enhance your life. It is always going to be up to you, right? What you decide to do with what I bring in. But it's like, I see your potential. Now we just want you to see your potential. All right, let's bring in the Gilded Tarot. You know, it's interesting, Sad, because the only card or energy that you have on the table that could be a little like, eh, would be the Two of Swords. Now, we'll find out why the Two of Swords is there, but I feel, but I feel it could be a little, just a little bit like a lack of believing in yourself. Not a lot. Like, there's not a lot of worry, but there's a little bit. All right. So, let's start at the beginning. But read them as a whole. All right, so. The hangman. The hangman's already swaying towards the world, the next chapter. And by the way, in the next chapter, the hermit has already emerged from the cave, so that wisdom is there. And then the hermit moving into the empress's energy, the creative, loving, nurturing energy that she is. You know, it's like the mother figure for the world, the father figure for the world down here.
You know, it's not always easy to close doors, to end chapters. But I feel if you're very honest with yourself and you really trust what you feel deep down, then you know, like, you get that feeling like, okay, this chapter is no longer serving me. Like, I've extracted all the wisdom I possibly could. What's next? We have the Page of Wands. This could be your younger self, your inner child. You know, I call the Page of Wands my risk taker all the time. Um, this is someone who's learned through life that, you know, yes, I'm going to take risk and no, they're not all going to pay off. But each one is going to teach me something. This is a page that gets back up again. You know what I mean? Um, but this could also talk about something like a dream that you've had since you were young. I'm saying young. Look at one by one, the cards come out. We have the King of Cups. Um, can be interesting. I was going to say Virgo, but it's not a Virgo. Um, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. We have Cancer and we have Scorpio on the table. Um, and you know what else I noticed when I lifted up the Hermit? Is the Queen of Cups. Whoa, it's like a little bug just flew by. King of Cups. Um, he's coming right over Scorpio's energy. I don't know right now if that's a good thing. Or not a good thing. So let's keep going. Let's see what comes on the other side. You know, to me... The King of Cups is someone who um, normally enjoys relationships. Now, he is in the upright. So, you know, must have a loving heart. But let's see. Let's keep going. Hello, Destiny. You know, what's meant to be. I want to say will be, but our free will does have a say so in that also. But with all the energy on the board, I love now seeing the wheel. Now the wheel is coming over that two of swords. It's almost like putting a wedge in the wheel, like stopping that wheel from spinning. But I feel like it's just a wedge, just a little wedge. And then we have the Page of Swords. Page of Swords can certainly talk about communication. Um, you know, something else I think about when I, I see a page is um, it can be what's in the atmosphere, energy that's already in the atmosphere. Doesn't mean it's reached you yet. This could be communication from someone. Um, can also represent a younger air sign. You know, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. We do have Aquarius on the board. Your opposite is Gemini. But this may be communication. Some type of communication that's coming in. And, you know, some of you may have just been like in an old relationship that didn't work out well. So that could be a little bit of the fear. Like, well, how do I know? You know, if I open my heart, because the Empress, her heart is open. How do I know that I'll be treated right? How do I know? How do I know? Well, this feels destined. So, because it feels destined, if it's speaking of love, then that would mean it's soulmates. And that makes sense with the Emperor and the Empress here. You know, soulmates, maybe even twin flames. 
I kind of hate using that word sometimes because I don't want people to get fixated on that. You know, oh, someone's a twin flame because then it's like no matter what they do, you accept it. Don't accept someone's bullshit, no matter what title you've given them, right? Like either love me or don't love me. There may be a few of you who have been considering yourself reaching out to someone. This can also represent um, earlier energy. You know what I mean? Like someone that you know from like back in the day. Again, two pages. One is definitely you. And then the page of swords, you know, can be an air sign, but it doesn't have to be an air sign. To me, it just can represent like, again, what's in the atmosphere? Like, is my phone about to ring? Um, is there some type of communication that's about to come in? And um, maybe you're feeling that. And that makes you a little nervous. But then look at this nine of pentacles. You have a lot of Virgo in this energy for some reason. This is Virgo's energy. But let me tell you what I love. This is, um, this is about a material harvest. Nine of Pentacles is seeing the fruits of your labor. This, the meaning of this card is successful self-employment. Now, it doesn't have to be self-employment, but it is success. But it is due to your, your energy towards it. It's like, you know, it's you putting that work in, even if it's just the beginning of it. That may answer a question. Can I really be successful at these ideas that I'm getting? I feel like as long as you're willing to focus upon it, then the answer is yes. This is also very independent type energy. And for some of you, that may have been important. Like that feeling of being able to stand on your own two feet. You know what I mean? Like. I don't need anybody to take care of me financially. I can take care of me. And I always feel like, isn't that the perfect time for love then to come in? Because I don't need you to take care of me. I don't need you to feed me. You know, clothe me. I need you to be a partner. Again, a nine. So reflection. Right? But I feel like... I feel like with this right between the emperor and the empress and also coming over the energy of your individuality and celebrating that, it's not just your individuality, it's celebrating who you are. Your guides are celebrating who you are. Now, you may want to ask yourself that question, am I celebrating who I am? We have victory and success. Six of wands. You know what I love about this energy? Is this is you on a platform. And this is where other people are really looking up to you. But they're looking up to you because of the action steps that you've taken. So you could be talking about it. But yet... It's like you're giving them like a playbook. Here's how you can be successful also. I feel like if you've been questioning that part of you, it would benefit you more just to put energy in it and trust, you know, trust these epiphanies you're receiving. Build that business. Again, it doesn't have to be like self-employment. But it definitely feels like, if nothing else, if this is if I'm working for a company, 
I'm doing it independently. Um, and, you know, the Emperor and the Empress, I feel like, are, would be great managers because they'd really nurture someone else's talent. Coming over to the star, though. So can your dreams really be successful? Yes. Three of Wands. Three of Wands is about living in the present moment. Coming over the chariot. So to me, it's like that two of swords, which is really the only somewhat difficult energy. Again, it's just the ripping off the blindfold. Trusting in yourself again. No matter what has happened, especially if you've learned from the past experiences. You know, if you've really learned, then you don't have to worry about repeating them. This is someone who has a very optimistic view of their future. But again, they're living in the present moment. This is someone who's saying, I know my ships will come in, but I know they'll come in their due time. Right when I need them. Right when I'm ready. And that's exactly what the Knight of Pentacles asked for. You know, Knight of Pentacles, again, I come at the right time, not before, not after. This feels like an important component of that. Because again, I'm looking at my life in an optimistic way. Doesn't mean all areas, hopefully all areas, but sometimes changing one aspect change, changes everything. I also love that this is like, you planting those seeds and those ships. We can see the ships. They just haven't reached the shore yet, but they will. Oh my. The Knight of Cups. Unexpected cup of fulfillment right over the full, right under your destiny, though also under the two of swords. Unexpected cup, I feel like of love, since we have the four of wands here. You know, some of you, it's it's been your affirmations. It is your intentions. It is what you're putting out into the universe. You know, it's like you're clearing the cobwebs and standing as either the emperor or the empress. You're pretty clear about what it is that you want next. Now, also, I think something we have to learn is, yes, put those intentions out there, but understand that they can be answered differently, but usually better. And then we have the page of pentacles. Page of Pentacles to me is about a learning experience. This is what I've been learning. Three pages, by the way. Now, this page could also be someone of, you know, someone that I used to know. Um, we do have a lot of earth on the table. And it's coming right after the Knight of Cups, unexpected cup of fulfillment, and the foal asking you, can you take this chance? Can you put the past behind you? And understand also, with the wheel right above it, this is talking about your destiny. So... I feel, and I love the Three of Wands right before the Knight of Cups, because again, I'm already in an optimistic view. I'm, I'm not trying to control. More, I'm being open. All right, let's keep going.
Page of Pentacles coming here and the magician tells me you've learned so much. We have the Two of Pentacles and then we have the Seven of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles to me is very much like the wheel. Um, Seven of Pentacles to me is something that's really is meant to be. But in the right time, it's much like the Knight of Pentacles also. Right? The right time. This is it, I, I I often refer to this as like an apple tree. These are your soul seeds of intention on this tree. But different ones come to fruition at different times. So actively manifesting one of these. But maybe more than one. Because again, I feel like your money sector, your creativity, I feel like it's just, it's going to be on fire. And then I feel like love. So I feel like two seeds are coming to fruition. By the way, this is coming under the star. Um, you know, the first message, the first message within the Seven of Pentacles is patience, right? I don't want to pick that apple until that apple is ripe. And it is mirroring the Knight of Pentacles, which also is patience, right? I don't come in until the timing is right. So it feels like you're moving closer and closer and closer to the right timing. I feel like there is definitely a need to believe within yourself. And anything you want to bring, like you want to create, this feels like the time. And I do feel that you already have the wisdom. It's just now, am I going to put it into action? And then I feel as you are in that type of energy, then I feel like, and then love enters the door. So this fool, right, living in the present moment, allowing oneself to have a new beginning, which is what the death card is asking you to do, allow, you like close one door and allow the next door to open. It's time. It just feels like it's time. I forget where I was going with that. And then, you know, the two pentacles, let's not ignore it. Because the two pentacles, you know, they call it the juggler's card. You know, and I really do love and build my own business at the same time. I think you can, but, you know, you have to answer that question. Um, I personally feel like this is more about using one's logical mind. And coming over the emperor, very easily, I feel like... You can come to a solution. You can come to an answer here. But if the question is, should I? Do I allow myself? Will I be successful? All of that is being answered already for you. Now it's about just trusting within yourself. I feel like there's two apples about to come ripe. Well, look who made it to the table. The Queen of Cups. And how interesting that she is now in the same line as the King of Cups. Now, yes, they can be a water sign. Again, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. We have Scorp Scorpio and Cancer right here. However, I kind of want you to forget all about, about that. Because I feel like, I feel like we've been talking about your money, your creativity, and now I feel like we're going to start talking about love. So I kind of love the king and queen mirroring each other, but also the three of wands in between them, right? Living in the, in the current moment, having an optimistic view. You know, know that the seeds that I plant, they will, they will produce for me. Right? They are going to produce these apples. 
And then look at this. The Ace of Wands. It's go time. It's go time. You know, this is inspired action. And to me, that means your guides are being very clear. They're helping to guide you. And they're helping to guide you to take any fear away. Even if you're moving step by step. And really, that's probably how you should take it. Step by step. This is passion being ignited within you. And hello, coming right under the Knight of Cups. And the wheel. You know, not only are you being inspired within your material world, you're being inspired within your love life. Unexpected. But it is like you're going to feel it. Like you just feel it. Maybe before it even arrives. For some of you, I feel like your phone's going to ring. There's going to be some type of communication. Or, for some of you, you may have thought about reaching out. You know, there may be someone on your mind. Now, I'm not talking about anyone who has treated you badly. Because this all feels like a much higher vibrational type energy. Both in your money and in love. You know, there's no way the Knight of Pentacles would be like, I'm going to bring you in. Um, you know, I'm bringing someone in who's going to break your heart. You've probably already learned that type of energy. Inspired. Passion. It's go time. So this Knight of Cups, again, unexpected. But it's over the full. Are, are you going to take that leap? It's under the wheel. It is part of your destiny. Are you going to remove that little wedge? Ace of Wands kind of tell me it kind kind of tells me that you are. And because the Queen and the King of you know when I'm thinking of love, the King and the Queen of Cups is who I really want to see, plus the Emperor and the Empress. This is high vibrational. This is not a lower level type of love. And what I mean by that is there are different levels as it relates to love. Different lessons, right? But once we've learned mainly who we are and how we want our life to look, you know, we've raised our own vibration. Well, the law of attraction must meet you right where you're at. That to me feels like that's why a door needs to close. Because that alone feels like it raises up your vibration. And that alone takes out that wedge of that wheel. And that wheel starts moving. So I feel like there's nothing to fear here. And yes, when I'm done here, I feel like I am going to bring out the Romance Angels. We have the Three of Cups. Beautiful. So this is the energy of joy. This is a reason to celebrate. Right over the Magician. Four of Wands. The Marriage Card. I call it the Commitment Card. The True Commitment. And when I say true commitment, I mean true love. Interesting, two pages attached to that. And then we have mm, the tower. So the tower coming under that two of pentacles kind of telling me now, you know, I feel like it's relating also back to that two of swords. But listen, I feel like this means the tower's already happened. And this is what you're considering. Right? Like, I have no interest in going back and receiving another tower. And the Two of Swords, again, is, is fear-based. But the Two of Pentacles, to me, is more the logical mind. We have, well, look at this, the sun. So, 
that definitely takes the power away from the tower because in the sun's energy, the one thing that you can know is anything that is done in the dark will come to the light, period. The sun is the illuminator. The sun's also a brand new day. It's playful, joyful. Like when the sun comes out in a reading, I feel like this is going to be a good time. This is going to be a good time in your life. And then the Knight of Swords. Interesting. He's coming into the reading. So, you know, just the way that they're falling. This Ace of Wands inspired action. Definitely of the light. Um, unexpected. This unexpected cup of fulfillment. But it feels like it's coming through communication first. But I feel like immediately it's going to bring some type of joy. You know, maybe even your playful side out. You know, like that inner child, that, you know, flirty, um, fun, let's see where it goes type energy. I don't feel like, I feel like at this point, you're not really putting any restrictions upon it. Doesn't mean that I'm willing to move quickly. But here's the thing, Sagittarius. I feel like because your vibration is definitely lifting, I know that what's coming in for you is also of a high vibration. I'm not saying perfect because none of us are perfect. Also, that tower mirroring, excuse me, the six of wands which again is the energy of being victorious. Also success. Some of you could have been with someone who um, just kind of held you down, held you back, didn't believe in you, made you not believe in yourself for whatever reason. And for Sagittarius, I feel like you can't take that forever. You know what I mean? Like, like, you might take it for a little while, but not for long. And, you know, it is the Two of Swords, not the Eight of Swords. So, there are no walls that are built up. I feel like that was part of what you've been learning. Yet, a little bit of fear makes sense in real life. Right? It does make sense. But I do feel like... That fear is what that wedge is that could potentially stop that wheel from turning. But at this point, honestly, for some of you, I'm telling you, this is your signs. These are your signs. And I feel like there is nothing at all you need to fear. Be true to you, number one. Live in the present moment. That's being shown over and over again. Plant those seeds so that you do have this harvest. But then let go of control of exactly how success must show for you and love must show for you. I mean, have certain expectations, of course. But you, you know, um, it's just like Sam and I. You know, the way we came together, it was completely, totally unexpected. But you know, here we are now in a committed relationship. So when I say unexpected, and you can probably even look back at your own life and, you know, just look at like certain relationships, um, you know, it's hard to plan love. I don't know that you can. I feel like the Tower and the Two of Swords and the Hangman are of the same energy. But that's what wants to leave. And what wants to open up is first with this Knight of Pentacles. Something that is definitely going to enhance your life. Something that's already part of your destiny. Something that you already have this wisdom. You know, 
two apples are becoming ripe. And one of them is in your money. And one of them is in love. Now, with that being said, let's bring in the romance angels. And I do want to remind you, this Knight of Swords is coming in, into the reading and has to travel through the sun's energy. So, you know, if I'm hiding anything, the sun would, would reveal that to me. That's why you feel like you don't have to worry. But if you are worried, again, the sun will reveal. The sun is your illuminator. The sun also reminds you to let that inner child of yourself out. Let it play. Let it have some fun. Let it have some new experiences. Okay. Let's bring in the romance angels. And, um, I mean, I think we should look at the Knight of Cups. That, again, is right under your wheel. That is sitting on top of the full, which is about a new beginning. It's also connected to this Ace of Wands. So inspired action, but also something that's passionate. And let's just look at that. Look at this. New love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. Now, let's just say you're interested in someone of the past. But the, but if you are interested in someone of the past, this is not someone who's like ghosted you. Um, because I feel like those days are done. Right? Like Sagittarius has claimed Sagittarius' energy. And... You know, if this is anyone of the past, then they are coming in as new. And I can relate that back to, like, again, Sam and I. You know what I mean? Like, we were together as teenagers. But it was new love. It was getting to know each other. But a new person has stirred your romantic feelings. And then look at this. Very soon. But the Knight of Pentacles is saying... Very soon, clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. Well, there's the fool. There's the will. Ace of Wands, intention, the Three of Wands, right? I'm, I'm, I'm planting those seeds, but I'm living in the present moment. And I just know, again, that those ships, which are my seeds, will find their way back to me. So, new love. Very soon. Let's just take one more round. Whoa. Heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other, especially as the emperor and the empress. I feel like what they'll figure out, even the queen and king of cups, because like-minded energy again. And I do want you to kind of forget about the signs, because I feel like you are either the queen of cups or the king of cups. I feel like you are either the empress or the emperor. Um, though I can definitely see you being both the emperor and the empress. Um, but I do, as this relates to love, I do feel like it's two different people. And I, you know, I often feel like when, let's just say, I, I do feel like this is a soulmate. So I often find with soulmates, um, especially when I do personal readings, uh, you know, I feel like, what was I going to say? I feel like they come at the right time. And I feel like soulmates, because we are human, well, we're spiritual beings having human experiences. What I find is with the soulmates or twin flames is they can, through these conversations, really understand themselves. 
So I feel like these soulmates help heal those last little broken pieces of each other, for each other. And you do have the Page of Swords and the Knight of Swords. So communication may be a big part of it, but heart to heart, eye to eye, soul to soul. Codependency. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. I feel like that is going back to the Two of Swords. And then flirt. Have some fun. Have a little fun. Conversation. Flirting. That is developing a new relationship. Expand your lighthearted energy to others. This codependency, this feels like what the tower was. Some of you, it could have been like an old love that just didn't love you in the way you deserve to be loved. Now, it could be a million different reasons why. Sometimes some people just don't know how to love, you know, and it could be because of their own upbringing. But those are their lessons to figure out. Like we're not here, like we are here to help each other. But there's certain lessons that, you know, I'm not here to teach another. They have to learn it on their own. But codependency, not a great word, you know, as it relates to because we're looking at love right now. It feels like someone may have like kept you on the line for a while. And that's the door. That's the door. Am I going to close it? You know, after this reading, after this reading, I'm sorry. I don't know how you not, how you don't close it. I guess you have to really believe that all this is possible. But if you do believe that all this is possible or that you have this potential, then believe it all. You know, if you've been in love with someone who is just not showing you that love back, um, you know, kept you hanging on the line, this is the opposite of that type of love. And that's why we, we keep seeing like-minded energy also, I feel like. You know, new love, over the full, a new beginning, unexpected cup of love coming in but the knight of pentacles is you know it can help ease your mind because i come at the right time and that you can trust in and i feel like there's only one thing this knight is waiting for and it's for you to remove that wedge that's holding that wheel in place just move it and watch the wheel start to move and watch this abundance, as long as you're willing to put your focus on it, watch it grow. Watch these unexpected, beautiful things start to enter your life. And think about where your own vibration is, because if you are planting, let's say, optimistic seeds, then that's what the universe must meet. The universe is going to meet you right where you're at. And that's why I feel like in Tarot, it's teaching us how to, well, close doors, end chapters. You know, what's no longer working, sometimes it's time to let it go. Those who just can't love us right, oh well. There's someone else out there who can. How much time do I want to give someone? Trying not to allow the past to stop you from creating new. You know, I feel like taking the power away from those who, again, maybe just couldn't love you right, whatever it may be. But I don't even feel like we should really harp on that because this, again, the two swords is not that 
major of an energy. But I do feel like it, again, is that wedge. And as soon as you take that wedge out, very soon, everything starts moving. Success and new love. Playful love. I feel like the only thing you may have to ask yourself as it relates to love, have you been in a, co a codependency relationship in the past? Sagittarius, I know, you know, I was going to ask you to ask yourself, and how did that feel? I already know what your answer is. Not good. Because I can't see you living in that type of energy for very long. But again, we are human beings having human experiences. And that's where our spirituality comes in. You know, your guardian angel, the very first uh, tarot card on the board. Success is mirroring it. Your individuality is being celebrated. This love that's coming in should bring joy to your heart. Should make you feel playful, passionate. And some of you, you may start to feel it before it even comes in. It's just like that feeling of, hmm, I just feel like something good's going to happen. And I would not be surprised for some of you if you find that the two of you work in the same type of business or that doesn't seem like the right word. It doesn't seem like the right word because the emperor and the empress, you know, they both care so much about their fellow man. It doesn't mean, again, that that's all I think about. Um, because you need to think about you. But let's not forget the empress. She's receiving these epiphanies. And it is her wisdom that I feel like is going to allow her to explore. And I kind of feel like the emperor is who she's going to meet along the road, along the way. And this is good because the emperor is someone we can look up to. And then the king and queen. I feel like I'm repeating myself now, but the king and queen of cups, they are the perfect energy as it relates to love. Close the doors that need to be closed. You already know within your heart what doors they are. Take that wedge from that wheel and, and try to have an optimistic view about what can be. Even if you have no idea how it could be, that's where your guides are saying, trust in us. We will guide you. That's what the Ace of Wands is. It is guidance. It's the it's guidance on the next action steps that you should take. But in the same breath, this Knight of Cups or this Knight of Swords that's coming in, who has to travel through the sun to reach you. Unexpected. So it this communication feels like it's also going to be unexpected, but very welcomed. You know, maybe a little scary but still very welcomed because I feel like immediately once you connect, you're just going to know, you know, these heart to heart conversations, it feels more soul to soul. All right. Let's take mother Mary over really what feels like a beautiful reading. There's very little, you know, it's like my beautiful Sagittarians have, Sagittarians have been learning, evolving. And it feels like everything is following that energy. I'm telling you, for some of you, this reading, it is your sign. It is your signs. There's more than one. All right. Feminine. Well, we have the Empress, 
She's definitely feminine energy. Feminine. I allow my feminine nature to shine brightly as a valuable part of my identity. Feminine. Going to be called into action. I feel like you won't be able to help it. You won't be able to help it. Let's see if anything else wants to come out. Whoa. Okay. Truth. Truth. I am lovingly honest with myself and others. That reminds me a little bit of the Two of Swords. Just being honest with yourself. What's working? What's not working? If I've given someone a lot of my time, but it's producing no fruits, then I may want to say goodbye. Goodbye. Truth. Okay. Okay, we got a few. Action. Well, we already know that through the Ace of Wands. Today, I take action related to the priorities that I have previously put off. Trust. I know that God, in his infinite wisdom and love, is answering my prayers right now. Well, yes, God is. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. You know, to live in a higher vibrational energy, we have to learn to forgive. It doesn't mean we have to pick up the phone. It doesn't mean you have to call anyone. You know, I think of some um, people who needed my forgiveness in my life. I didn't pick up the phone and say, hey, I forgive you. I just forgave in my heart. I, you know why? You know, I'm just going to tell you a really quick story on that. You know, like Sam had, Sam and I had, Sam and I had a lot of similar experiences, um, you know, and it was these heart to heart talks that where we really figured that out. But there's still some things that he cannot let go of. And I've been trying to, Help him to let go of them. You know, I'm trying to tell him the importance of forgiveness. It sets you free. It sets you free. I am willing to release old resentments. Well, so that I may enjoy my life. And the last but not least, devotion. As I fully commit to my values, relationships, and God... I am clear about what to do next. Feminine, being called. This is the truth. Action steps will be given. You do need to take them. Trust within them. Let go of the past with the energy of forgiveness. I know that's not always easy. But I do feel it's important, especially because I feel like that's what helps raise our vibration. Like the more we can think about, and you know, it, it's not physical things. A lot of times it's like emotions and that type of thing that helps us raise our vibration. Even this codependency energy. You know, if someone's like left you on a hook, hanging on a hook. Yes. You kind of need to forgive that too. But it doesn't mean forgive and then take back. It just means within your own heart. And then devotion to yourself. But then also to this relationship and to divine. Just a perfect mix. I loved it, Sagittarius. Um, I say that with every reading I do, but every reading I do, I love. Because I feel like, what is what are these readings doing? They're helping us to evolve so that our lives, listen, I still learn from Tarot. You know, my life is not perfect. Most Tarot readers' lives are not perfect. But, you know, if you're open as a reader, then, of course, you're going to learn from this energy. You know, like there's certain energies I see where I think to myself, okay, Sandy, that's also for you too. You know what I mean? Um, so anyways, I loved your reading, guys. I just loved it. Um, I think I might even title 
your reading, this is your sign. This is your sign. Look at the abundance. Look at the love. You know, but it's but it's all about enjoying it in the present moment, not projecting too far out in the future because it is these present moment energies that's really going to determine our future. If I have an optimistic view, well, then chances are more optimism is going to keep coming to me. If I have a negative view, chances are more negative things are going to continue to come to me. So I need to think about what I'm thinking about. I need to trust in these signs. You know, you're always being guided. Always. And when you miss a sign, I'm telling you, another sign will be sent. You know, especially like red flags. Red flags, many of us, I know I've ignored red flags before. And then years later, been damn, I saw that red flag, but yet I still ignored it. But then I learned from that. And that's really the thing. No one's judging you like, hmm, she, we gave her a red flag and she just ignored it. Shame, shame on her. No, there's no judgment. There is, this is all about you learning as a soul. No judgment whatsoever. This is just to help you have the best life that you can have. You know, we have this mere lifetime. It's not even that long. Why not live life according to our terms? Okay, I'm going to let that be, guys. I thank you. I love you. Truly love you. So grateful for each and every one of you. And I'm not kidding when I say that. Um, I truly feel like we are one big soul family. And I feel like when we all leave this world, we're all going to gather together again. And we're going to talk about, you know, the things that we've learned through this, you know, at this table. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of you like leave me comments say like, I feel like I'm sitting at your table. I feel like you're sitting at my table also. Like in my mind's eye, you're all here. So anyways, I thank you. I love you. And I hope, I hope and pray that you see what this reading is really trying to tell you so that these energies can come about. I love you. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.